BJ Hill is back. Hi again, everyone. I'm James Erpine of AllBengals.com and Cincinnati Bengals Talk. And can you tell, can you notice, we're at Paul Brown Stadium. And, well, that's where we're going to be as the, the league loosening the protocols, going away with the protocols, essentially, where we're able to cover the team in person uh, for quite some time, uh, for the first time in quite some time. So really excited about that. Got to uh, sit in on BJ Hill's news conference today, just a few minutes after the deal was official. Um, three years, $30 million, $15 million in year one, according to reports. And look, it's a huge signing for the Bengals. Why? Because this was a guy that wasn't even on the roster a year ago. He joined the Bengals at the end of August. They traded a guy in Billy Price who, let's be honest, was a bust in Cincinnati for a variety of reasons, but did not deliver like you'd expect a first-round pick to deliver. And they turned it into a guy who really has a chance to be a staple of this Bengals defense for the foreseeable future. 26 years old, had 50 tackles in 16 games last year, had five and a half sacks, had a huge interception in the AFC Championship game that really helped turn the tide against the Kansas City Chiefs. B.J. Hill can play, and he's consistent on the ground against the run, also consistent as a, a rusher, an interior pass rusher. So I think this was a huge deal for the Bengals to get done. And he was all smiles. I had to uh, ask B.J. Hill today in the news conference room here at Paul Brown Stadium what his first reaction was to signing that new deal and, uh, and really finding out uh, the fact that he was going to be staying in Cincinnati. What was the, the feeling like when you found out that the deal was, was done and what was your first reaction? Um, this right here, I couldn't stop, couldn't stop smiling, man. And, uh, yeah, it was, I just had this big smile on my face, just walking around the house. It was like screaming, let's go the whole, pretty much the whole day. It was just, it was incredible, man. Um, you worked so hard to get to, to the NFL and, uh, make it to, you know, to your second contract. And, and I did it. Um, so it's truly a blessing to be here. And, and be somewhere that's special. B.J. Hill certainly all smiles, yelling, let's go. I love that answer. And uh, certainly a guy that, like I said, could be a staple of this defense for years to come. Zach Taylor praised his versatility, his ability uh, to not only make an impact on the field, but how quickly he adapted after the trade from the Giants. Like I said, late August, only had a week, week and a half before the Bengals' first game. Was able to catch up, was able to get going. And... The thing that we've talked a lot about is culture, right? And the Bengals have added some guys, Ted Karras, Alex Kappa. Uh, those, those guys aren't official. They'll be official later this week when uh, they can all fly here and sign their deals. And, and who knows who else, and I'll get to that in a minute. But culture, right, in this Bengals culture and what they've built and how fun it was to watch them last season make a run to the Super Bowl and win the AFC title and win the AFC North and all of these things. And it's interesting because B.J. Hill, well, he didn't get top of the market money. In fact, his former teammate Larry Ogunjobi got more money to go to Chicago. But Hill said it was always a priority to stay in Cincinnati. Deep down inside, I knew I wanted to be back here because I knew it was it's, it's special here. Um, special coaches, special uh, players, uh, special D-line. And um, I definitely wanted to be back. I was telling people, hey, I'm, I'm going back to Cincinnati. I want to be back here. And that was my goal. That was my uh, main priority is to be back here. Now that Hill's contract is done, well, the Bengals, they're going to pivot, and they absolutely have some weaknesses or some areas that they're going to address. And who knows? Maybe they've addressed them by the time you see this video. Cornerback, I think they're in on corners. And it's interesting how many corners are out there, how many tight ends are out there, because guys like C.J. Uzama obviously got paid. Will Disley uh, at tight end got paid. But at some point, the market is going to drop a little bit, and I think that might be what the Bengals are waiting for. You know, if you can get O.J. Howard for – one year, four million bucks, or two years, eight, nine million dollars. He's 27 years old, former first round pick, certainly has the talent, might be coming into his prime after uh, an up and down stint with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that's just one guy. Maybe they go after a Tyler Conklin or someone like that. And those are two guys that I would have my uh, eyes on. Gerald Everett, certainly someone that has familiarity with Zach Taylor, so maybe it's him. But the point is, at some point, the market's going to crash a little bit and the Bengals are going to pounce here. And I think that's what they're maybe not waiting for. Maybe they're in talks right now with some of these guys, but it's a process. It's going to take time. Uh, I know a lot of you 
uh, asked about J.C. Treader on social media. So I'll talk about him because I actually covered Treader for a couple of years in Cleveland. Um, first things first, dude is durable. Played in 80 straight regular season games for the Browns at center. The dude uh, is really, really reliable. He's a leader, 31 years old. He's the president of the NFL Players Association. So for me, absolutely, because you could put Ted Karras, and this is the beauty of signing a guy like Karras, he could just play left guard for you. And some argue that that's his better position. Here's the question. Do the Bengals want to take those funds that they had probably allocated to right tackle or allocated to cornerback, take some of those? Because I think they right now are planning, yeah, they'll address left guard with a a veteran, but it's going to be a competition at that spot. And so do they want to say, nope, we're going to throw this money at J.C. Treader? Personally, I mean, 78.7, I believe, pro football focus grade last year. looks like he still has plenty in the tank. It depends on what he's asking for because you see a lot of these guys go to division rivals of the team that lets them go, and they want to stick it to the team partially. But maybe the Bengals, and to me, I would at least call and see what it would take to get Treader on the roster because maybe you could land Treader and still add a Darrell Williams at right tackle and still keep yourself in the Lyle Collins sweepstakes where there really isn't much else on that as of right now, as of Tuesday at uh, 2.30 Eastern time, which could change in any moment. So uh, if that does, we'll obviously have you covered. Uh, but the four spots I think the Bengals uh, certainly looking to address at some point in Treader, the wild card, but right tackle, tight end, cornerback. And then I think they're going to look for another edge rusher as well. Would not be shocked at all. Now that doesn't mean that it's going to happen today. doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow, but certainly going to happen. Uh, So we'll see Uh, when it happens, what happens. uh, Here's what I know is we're going to have you covered regardless right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talks. If they make a big signing, we'll have it covered. We're going to have a video. We're going to have articles posted at allbengals.com, instant reaction all day long as well on the Locked on Bengals podcast. So it's good to be back. This it gives you a preview of what you're going to see here uh, for the foreseeable future now is we'll be at Paul Brown Stadium covering the Bengals right where we would be and where we've wanted to be throughout uh, really since CBT launched. The problem was is, well, COVID. And hopefully we're, we're going to get past it and we're going to open things up here and be able to, you know, do a little field spins like we do. Look at that. It's a beautiful day here in downtown Cincinnati at Paul Brown Stadium. Maybe it's because they're all smiles and the, you know, the, the skies are smiling down the same way B.J. Hill was smiling when he signed that deal. So we'll have the latest for you when it breaks for our channel coordinator, Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Rapine signing off for now right here at Paul Brown Stadium on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.